Hey, welcome back to Crimes and Closets. This is Beth in my closet in North Carolina. And this is Christy in my closet in St. Louis. Good morning to you. Good morning. I'm going to see your face in person. (gasps) Happy Girls Weekend week. Literally, you will see my face in person. What's today? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Four days. Yeah, I will. Four days. Yeah, I sure will. (laughs) I'm going to hug it to pieces. I can't wait. Yes. Yes, I can. I cannot wait to hug your neck. <laughs> oh, so that's what's going on with us. We're yes. just living on cloud nine, counting down days here. I know. That's all I want to think about. So let's just jump into crime right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, and we also have a haunted, what is it? Ghost tour thing. Oh, yes. Planned that just happened. We just, Christy just booked us for it. I'm real excited because, you know, we've talked about how we should do these haunted ghost tours together. I think it was on our yes. Patreon that we talked about that. But it's a um, it's a ghost pub crawl because oh. um, we have another friend that is joining us that is not into crime. And so initially <laughs> she was like, yeah, so I don't really I'll go on the ghost tour, but it's not really my thing. And I was like, what if it's a pub crawl? She was like. That I could get into. <laughs> <laughs> she could show up for 50% of that. <laughs> right. She'll just be like, I'll get the drinks, guys. You guys listen. <laughs> I wonder how that will even work. I don't even know. Ooh. We have a nice dinner. We're going to see my sister-in-law. We're going to go shopping. Yes, I'm so excited. We're going to make jewelry. Yes, we're going to make malas. If you guys know what those are, we'll post. We'll post. Yes. Yeah, we need to remember because I feel like last time we're like, we'll post, we'll post, and we post like one thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's posting. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 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 Um, so what are you, what's, I know it's Monday for all of our listeners, but what are you doing this weekend? So I am going to, on Saturday, a wine and bubbly fest mm. that um, a friend of mine's um, husband or whatever, husband and kids gave this to her for Mother's Day okay. and it was tic- four tickets. So she immediately like texted a few of us and was like, save the date. We're going to this wine and bubbly fest. And it's just at the science center here in St. Louis. And I don't really know exactly. It's just, like you go and you just get a glass that you can take home. And I believe you just visit stations and you like just get taste of wine and so bubbly is as in champagne not as in like Mm -hmm. bubbles oh i was like are you guys (laughs) gonna be in like a foam pit or something drinking wine because (laughs) when you first said it i was like hmm yeah no i don't think so no (laughs) okay so i'm pretty sure that it's like um yeah yeah i mean i i really can't find a whole lot of information about it on this except grab your friends and come drink with us essentially so that's all i needed (laughs) <laughs> yeah there <laughs> yeah nice that sounds fun yeah. good yeah good for you you're like benefiting from someone else's mother's day too i know i feel like i should write a thank you card to her husband you should thanks for the mother's day present. <laughs> yeah that's so fun thanks for the wine and bubbly <laughs> yeah so anyway how about you i ha- so it's my littlest birthday mm, he's gonna be seven mm. on saturday it's oh that. my gosh that's right so sad And so we have friends coming into town and we're doing his birthday on Saturday at the pool. And then we rented a suite at a baseball game. It's like a minor league (gasps) baseball game. Yes. And we rented like the, you know, this, the box or whatever. And oh my gosh, we have all this food and a bunch of like his friends are coming. It's going to be fun. That does sound fun. He's going to love it. Does he know that you rented the box? No. He knows something's happening on Saturday, on Sunday. But he does not mm-hmm. know specifics. So he's in mid- awesome. He plays baseball, so he'll be excited. That's cool. Yeah. So fun. So Aww. I'm excited. I know. I to watch a baseball Gosh. game in the AC. Right? Yeah. Oh. Exactly. Do they provide, does it include like food? That sweet? No, you have no, you pay for like the rental of it and then you order food and they okay. just have it there ready. Right. For you and like drinks. And well, stuff. that's what I meant. Like you can, you can get food and yeah. it'll just be like, kind of, yeah. yeah, I don't have to take anything. Right. That's awesome. I know. And we, and our friends are coming too, that are coming into town for the weekend. So that'll be really fun. Oh, yay. Man, I wish I was there. Damn it. I know. I've got some, <laughs> I've got an extra seat actually. So come on. Come early. Come down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm hopping a plane. I'm ready. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to be waiting at the airport. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I also have a crime story for you today. Um, but 
before you start that, we have to welcome our new Patreon. Oh, that's right. Look at me. Listener, Kaya, right? It's Kaya. We hope so. We hope it's Kaya. Yeah, we hope that's how we pronounce it. So if we did not, you can you can um, write into us. She's yeah. so very sweet. She said oh. she found us recently and binged our whole pod in a month and then immediately joined Patreon, which was very sweet. That is so cool to hear. We appreciate it, it so I, much. I, when I responded to her, you probably saw it. I was like, I cannot believe you binged them all because those earlier episodes are real rough yeah. <laughs> to listen to. <laughs> They're rough for us even to listen to. We were like... It, it's fun to go back sometimes and listen to it, but I'm like, what was I thinking? Like, why did yeah. I even research that way? Why did I like well, lay the story it, out in that way? I want to redo them and like do do them better, like do them more justice than how we did them. Yeah, that's you, true. you know what that's I mean. True. Yeah, it was the um the Rodin episode that we were talking about recently. Oh yeah, and, and and I went back and listened to it after you said something about it, and thought. Oh my gosh. Like, yes, the audio was crappy because we just didn't, we didn't have the right stuff we needed, whatever. Um, but I also said, gosh, we are so awkward. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's like, I, we need to redo it. <laughs> Every, so I have, I can't go back and listen to them because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is adding so many things to our to-do list that like, <laughs> yeah. literally be like a whole first half of a season would have to be redone, I think. I know. Like if I, if I had my druthers, I would redo it all. <laughs> right. But yeah. anyway, yeah. we appreciate you guys for still liking it. It's crazy. I'm sure yeah. maybe it's fun to see the evolution too. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Now I'm just like, meh. <laughs> <laughs> Turning that off. <laughs> so, anyway. Okay. Right, so now you can get into your crime. Well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to right now. This is a listener suggestion from Jana. Oh, Jana, she's done a couple, right? Jana has suggested several cases before, fabulous cases. One of the cases that she suggested was Janet Chandler, mm -hmm. which is in our top five most played oh, cases. Nice. So if you haven't listened to that one, go back and listen to that one. It's mm -hmm. real good. This, however, is the case of Emmett Corrigan, which is, I love the name Emmett. Emmett is a good name, although I always think of um, the Lego movie now when I hear it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Emmett Michael Corrigan was born on August 30th, 1980, which makes him a Virgo. Okay. His parents were Mike and Radine. Emmett was an only child raised in Boise, Idaho, or the area of Boise, Idaho. Mm. Have we been to Idaho? I was just going to say, I don't think we have. Only man. I always keep thinking the Idaho, Yodaho. <laughs> no. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I know why I did that. His parents uh, both divorced and remarried other people at some point when Emmett was still young, but they both co parented very well. It seems like he had a perfectly normal upbringing. You know, just all good things. Mm -hmm. Emmett was a very good looking, athletic guy. He had dark hair and ice blue eyes. Mm. Ice blue. Piercing blue. He attended Centennial High School where he played football and loved it. It was said that he would have played football forever if he could. Mm -hmm. Absolutely loved it. He loved skiing, outdoor sports, and grilling good food. He's described as very hardworking and ambitious, which is basically verbatim a Virgo. <laughs> it's just the description <laughs> of a Virgo. That's exactly how they are. When Emmett was 17 years old, he made the decision to become baptized in the LDS church. Oh, is that the L Latter-day Saints? Right. So it's Mormon. And he, he didn't grow up Mormon, but he was around it. Mm -hmm. So he was Mormon adjacent. And he <laughs> became baptized in the church and really was immersed in the Mormon faith and their way of life. He graduated high school and went to Ricks College, which is an LDS university in Rexburg, Idaho. Just Ricks College, you know. I know. That's what I was like. Hey, Rick. I went to Ricks. Yeah. Beth's College. And he played football for them as well. 
However, after one semester, he left the college and went on a mission with the LDS church to Brazil and served in a small municipality of Sao Paulo. Oh, okay. For two years, from 2000 to 2002. Okay. Once his mission was over, he moved back to the States and continued his education at Utah State University. He was a bodybuilder. He loved going to the gym, loved working out, being fit. And while at the gym in 2003, he met a beautiful young lady named Ashley Harmon. Hmm. Ashley was a student at the school and a member of the LDS church, and she worked at the gym. Ashley was the bombshell. Mm. Super gorgeous, very sweet, and the two of them fell in love very quickly. And within about five months of meeting, they were married in an LDS temple in March of 2004. Wow, quick, five months. Five months. The following year, in April 2005, they welcomed twin girls. Hmm. So, as you can imagine, that was quite a lot going on. Mm -hmm. They were very young. They were just in their early 20s. They were still in college, both of them. Oh. Yeah, and had gotten married and were now parents to twins. But family members said that they were a great team. They worked their schedules out so that one of them could be home when with the girls when the other one was in class or working. And they both did graduate from college. After graduation, Emmett then went to law school. So he's a driven dude. Yeah, right. He got his law degree, took the bar exam, and made plans to open up his own law practice in Boise, Idaho, near where he had grown up. And Ashley became a stay-at-home mom. Hmm, okay. Okay. During all of that time that they got their undergraduate degrees and then Emmett went to law school and took the bar exam, they had two more children. So not okay. only were they finishing up their education and he's going on to law school, they're still having kids, so now they have four. They moved to a suburb of Boise called Meridian, which is the second biggest city in Idaho outside of Boise. Oh, so Boise is the first, Idaho, so. <laughs> Meridian the second. It's a big city still. And Emmett started work opening up his own law practice, and he specialized in bankruptcy and criminal defense law and became pretty successful. Hmm. Ashley also became pregnant with their fifth baby. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they're just steaming Gosh, how old are they now? <laughs> so they're late 20s by now, right. and they are just – like living the dream. I can't imagine five kids ever. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, if you're going to do it, do it in your 20s while yeah. you can actually like mm. have the energy. But so they've got four beautiful kids, one more on the way. Emmett is a hotshot attorney. Ashley is this beautiful stay at home mom. Emmett put in a lot of hours at the firm and was very committed to do well at his career. And Ashley loved staying at home with the kids. That was fulfilling to her. They were excited to grow their family. It sounds great. It sounds great, right? Mm -hmm. But why are you here? We've seen this movie I know, before. It's not going to stay great. Nope. Enter stage left, a paralegal that Emmett hired in 2010 named oh, no, Emmett. Candy Hall. Oh, candy. Candy. It's another candy. Mm. There's something about a candy. Mm -hmm. I don't like sounds, candy. Sounds sweet. <laughs> Go straight to your gut. You know what I'm saying? Not good. Yeah. Candy had moved to Meridian a few years before from California, and she was an experienced paralegal. She was married to Robert Hall, and the two of them had two teenage daughters. So Candy is older than Emmett. She's 10 mm -hmm. years older, actually. He was 30, and she was 40. And she's got teenage kids. Candy had gotten fired from the firm where she was working. And when mutual friends introduced them, Emmett was like, oh, you don't have a job and you're a paralegal? I have a new law firm. I need a paralegal. So he hired her. Candy was everything you would imagine a California girl is woman. She wasn't a girl. She was a 40-year-old woman. Mm -hmm. She had blonde hair, blue eyes, tan, athletic, all that. Do we so, know why she got fired or is that coming later? It comes later. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's a little Easter egg for you. Got it. In. Not long after Emmett and Candy met, the two of them 
began having an affair. Mm-hmm. No mm-hmm. pain stands in the law firm. And it <sighs> hours at the office, in quotes, began getting longer and longer. And he also started spending a lot more of his free time away from the house, at the gym, doing bodybuilding activities, just not being home. Hmm. Ashley noticed this shift in Emmett and in their relationship, and she became very concerned about their marriage. Apparently, Emmett and Candy were less than discreet. And like even some of the employees were like, there's something going on with them. Mm -hmm. But Ashley had no idea. No one said anything to her. She did not know that he was having an affair. She actually thought that Emmett might be having an alcohol problem or something. She knew something was wrong. Something was going on and something had changed, but she didn't know what it was. And she didn't think it was an affair. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Then in January of 2011, Ashley gave birth to their fifth baby, who was a little boy. Okay. Emmett spent more and more time away from Ashley more time away from their family. Ashley begged Emmett to tell her what was going on, to go to marriage counseling, but he refused. She ended up going to marriage counseling alone. Oh, God. Because she was so upset and really wanted to make things work and was like, what am I doing wrong? You know, maybe I could better myself or figure out tools to help our communication, all this stuff. She was really trying. Wow. Absent, I know it's heartbreaking. His absent got absence got so bad that one of their children asked Ashley if her daddy even still lived with them. Stop. So oh gosh. yeah, he was gone a lot. All the while, he is continuing to have this affair with his paralegal, Candy, who is also married, remember, with two kids. Right. At some point during early 2011, Robert, that's Candy's husband, read a text message that Emmett had sent to Candy. Okay. So it was pretty late at night, and it said something like that he wished he was with her or something. And Robert allegedly confronted candy and Emmett about it so it doesn't say what happened like during the confrontation or incident or whatever but we know that robert candy's husband now knows that he Mm. is having an affair he is aware by the way robert worked for the sheriff's department as a computer technician specializing in car locators like he doesn't seem like a person you'd want to try to like right hide things from but yeah Mm -hmm. anyway So Ashley and Emmett's seventh wedding anniversary was in March of 2011. They've got these five children. Their youngest was only seven weeks old. And on the weekend of their anniversary, Emmett scheduled to be out of town uh, at a bodybuilding competition. Allegedly, we don't really know. Mm -hmm. And this really hurt Ashley's feelings. Like, because they're already having all these troubles in their marriage and he doesn't want to be around and it's very clear. And now he's not even doesn't even care about their anniversary. He was like MIA all weekend. He barely called, barely acknowledged their anniversary. And Ashley was like, our marriage is falling apart. Mm -hmm. Like, this is it. It's it's gonna be over if something doesn't give. Like, we have Mm -hmm. to do something. And she's determined to repair the relationship, figure out what's going on and fix it. Wow. So on March 11th of 2011, this was a Friday, Ashley decided that she was going to surprise Emmett with a super nice dinner to sort of celebrate their anniversary that he had missed. So she's like, you know what? I'm going to forget about it. Let it go. Move forward and try to fix my marriage. So she, what? (sighs) Sorry. She just seems like such a nice person. Yeah. She really is a nice person. I'd have been like, nope, I'm not talking to you for like a week. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. So she spent the day cleaning and cooking. She put all of the kids in nice clothes and like dressed him up. She did her hair and she waited for Emmett to come home from work so she could surprise him. But Emmett, he had no idea that any of this was going on. So he kept working like into the evening and was two hours late coming home for dinner. Mm -hmm. When he finally did get home though, and they all sat down, Emmett said he'd already eaten and like refused to eat the dinner or just was like, I'm not eating this. I already ate. What the hell? So that's not nice. No. He was distracted. He was grouchy. It was just clear. He didn't want to be there. Mm -hmm. He was just not there. He went into the, no, he went into the bedroom, made a phone call and then said that he had to run out for a bit to Walgreens to pick something up. Ashley was very upset, very upset. And I think she probably at this point was like, 
dude. I worked all day to make this dinner. Mm -hmm. You're being so rude. It's really mean. You need to stay. You need to stay here and talk to me and we need to fix our marriage. And he said to her, don't tell me what to do. And got in his truck and left. Gosh, Emmett is going down the pole for me. (laughs) Well, yeah, he's not being very nice to Ashley. No. Meanwhile, Candy had gotten home from work that evening, and Robert, her husband, was in the garage packing boxes. He told her he was sick of the affair she was having with Emmett. He was done. I'm leaving. I'm out. I don't want to be with you anymore. Candy took a phone call, and then she left the house. She was like, well, do whatever you want. Like, whatever. I don't think she was like Mm -hmm. that. I don't know if that's true, but Mm -hmm. she said she wasn't like that. She said she did not want her marriage to end. Hmm. But she took well, a phone call. Affair? Well, she took a phone call and she left. Any guesses where she went? Mm-hmm. Over to Emmett's. <laughs> she went to Walgreens <laughs> to meet oh. Emmett. Oh, to meet Emmett. Okay, right. Well, that's Emmett. what I meant to meet Emmett, but she wouldn't have gone over to Emmett's. But, yeah. yeah, no, she went to the Walgreens to meet up with him, and they actually do go to Walgreens. So they're seen on surveillance footage pulling into the parking lot. Candy got out of her car. And got into Emmett's truck and the two of them drove off. They're then seen on surveillance pulling into a nearby gas station and Emmett pumped gas in his truck. Then the two of them went to a secluded place and they had sex in in the truck. Okay. Then Candy got a call from her oldest daughter, who was 18 years old at the time. And actually, I think she was 16. Something like that. She was a teen. Mm -hmm. She was with her boyfriend and he was bringing her home and she saw her mom's car in the parking lot of the Walgreens. And so she was like, why are you at Walgreens? Mm -hmm. And her mom said, Candy said that she was with a friend. She would be home soon. So when the daughter got home, she told her dad, Robert, about this. She said, I saw mom's car at the Walgreens. What is she doing? And so Robert went to Walgreens. He was like, well, what is she doing at Walgreens? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he goes to Walgreens to find Candy and probably knowing in the back of his mind that she might be with Emmett and that he might catch them. Right. Yeah. Robert was seen on surveillance pulling into the Walgreens parking lot and parking on the left side of Candy's car. So in the space right beside her on the left side. He looked in her car. He went into Walgreens. He walked up and down every single aisle looking for her. Mm -hmm. And then he walked out, he got back in his truck and he pulls his truck out of the parking space, but then pulls it right back in to the parking space on the other side of Candy's car. So like, was he getting ready to leave and then decided not to, or why did he want to be? But when he pulls in to the other space, it now makes the whole front of his truck out of the camera's view. Okay. So you can see Candy's car and then you can see his truck parked, but just the back of it. Like the back mm. of the tires. The front's not in, an, in the camera's viewpoint anymore. He then called Candy. He said, I'm at Walgreens. Your car is here. You're not. Are you with Emmett? Mm. And she tells him that she is. Emmett then grabbed the phone away from Candy and says, hey, what's up, chief? Like, yeah, we're together. What's up? So okay. apparently the two of them had some words. We don't really know what was said. And Robert, he t- Emmett told Robert, wait right there. We'll be right back. We'll, we're on our way. We'll be mm-hmm. here. A few minutes later, Emmett's truck pulls into the parking lot. You see it on surveillance, but parks out of the camera's view. Then eight minutes after Emmett and Candy arrive at the Walgreens, 911 calls start flooding in. People are saying that they were driving by Walgreens. They heard gunshots in the parking lot. Some people say they live nearby Walgreens and they heard two to three shots. A woman was screaming. Send police. Candy also made a 911 call. She was hysterically screaming. She was screaming, Robert, Robert, Robert. Hysterical. Police showed up to the Walgreens parking lot and they find Candy crazy, like crying, screaming. She has blood on her. And there are two men laying on the ground bleeding and a 380 caliber pistol. Robert had a wound on the top of his head and was bleeding everywhere, but he was alive and moving. 
Hmm. Emmett had a gunshot wound to his forehead and one to his chest. And he, mm. it was pronounced dead. At the oh, time. man. He was 30. Oh, gosh. So young. So Robert was taken to the hospital and treated for his injury, which just ended up being a grazing wound to the top of his head from a bullet. Okay. And he just had, it just required stitches. It's, it, oh. it's gnarly looking. I mean, I saw a picture of it, but like, it's not deep or anything. Right, right. Okay. So Candy was taken into the police station for questioning. None of the shooting was caught on surveillance cameras, by the way. So mm-hmm. Candy is the only witness. Nobody oh. else saw what happened, and it's not on any cameras. So Candy admitted to being with Emmett that night, but she denied at first that the two of them had any sexual relationship. She said that they just ran into each other at Walgreens and decided to drive around a bit. Yeah, that's what people normally do. Yeah, with their boss. But she <laughs> later changed her story and she fessed up about the affair. But it just shows that she was trying to lie at first, mm-hmm. in my opinion. She told police about how Robert had called her, like caught them essentially together, that he was jealous. And then he showed up in the Walgreens parking lot and he confronted them. She says that Emmett was being very aggressive towards Robert. That he was taunting Robert. He was saying Candy didn't want to be with him anymore because he didn't make any money and that Robert couldn't compete with him. He's this young, successful attorney and, you know, she don't want to be with you. She said that Emmett pushed Robert and was getting in his face and yelling and that Robert was saying things like, your poor wife, she's home alone with these five kids and here you are with my wife. Candy then said that she told both men they were being ridiculous. Knock it off. We're going home. Stop. Cut it Mm -hmm. out. And she turned and walked to her car. While her back was turned, she heard a scuffle on the ground like the two men were fighting. And then she heard pop, pop, pop. So two quick pops, Mm -hmm. pause, and then another pop. This is what she tells police that night. She turned around and she saw Robert holding the gun and bleeding. And then he fell. Then she saw Emmett laying on the ground bleeding. She ran over to Emmett and was holding him and kissed his cheek when he took his last breath. So that's who she decided to run to. Right. Yes. She called 911 Candy had no gunshot residue present on either hand, so she was ruled out as being the shooter, Mm -hmm. and she was let go. Robert's account of the incident was that he was acting in self-defense. He reported that Emmett was being aggressive, that Emmett was coming after him, he was saying awful things, and that Emmett pushed him, and they started fighting. He said that he had a gun in his pocket, which he always kept with him, and that when they were fighting, it fell out, and that during the fight, Emmett grabbed it and shot him, but missed, and so the the bullet grazed his head. He then said that he was confused and, like, dazed, and he blacked out, and he doesn't know exactly what happened because his next clear memory was waking up in the hospital but that he must have somehow gotten the gun back from Emmett and then shot Emmett to defend himself, to keep Emmett from killing him. But that doesn't line up with pop, pop, pop. That would be pop, pop, pop. (laughs) Yeah, and ding, ding. (laughs) All the noises. You are correct. It doesn't make sense based on what Candy said. Okay. Okay, investigator t- investigators tested Robert's hand for gunshot residue and found that he had hundreds of particles on both hands. So he mm-hmm. definitely shot the gun. It wasn't just one, Emmett, as we've had in right. other cases. <laughs> exactly. Emmett had one particle on one hand. So he really did just have one. <laughs> so okay. they know that Robert fired the gun and Emmett did it. So that doesn't make his story make sense either. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like that just like flew onto him. One just flew onto him or something. Like Well, yeah, I'm sure he has some residue on on him as well. And right. they determined that he was shot within like two to three feet. 
So very close range. Mm -hmm. In Robert's truck, they also found printed emails where Robert had confronted Candy in emails about this ongoing affair with Emmett. So like, why did he have these printed in his truck? Yeah. Super weird. Also, Who prints anything, by the way, anymore. Well, that I do. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just kidding. I do too. For My notes day. are printed right here. <laughs> well, no, I understand, but you print emails unless he's no. like using it as a like some sort of in the divorce as like evidence or something. Right. True. So, um, also, I think it's weird. I meant to say this that he had the gun in his pocket. Yeah. Like, who does that? No, like put it, keep it in your glove box or like. Well, if you're going to carry it, you put it in a holster or like your belt loop yeah. or, you know, like it's up on your waist. It's not in your pocket, like on your leg. It's weird to me. So Emmett, no, Robert was arrested for the first degree murder of Emmett. Mm. Investigators then had to go tell Ashley, Emmett's wife, this shocking news that not only had her husband been having an affair. But the, he had now been murdered by his mistress's husband. Oh, my gosh. How awful. I cannot. So mm -hmm. she said in an interview that she remembered, like, he, they came in the middle of the night. It was like one in the morning. And so the next morning she told her kids and that she remembers telling her kids and that they all just sat there in shock. Like, what do we do now? Like, what mm -hmm. are we supposed to do with this? Right. Okay, so Robert goes on trial in October of 2012. The defense continued to claim self-defense. They claimed that Robert did not go to Walgreens to kill Emmett. They said that he went to get his wife back. And that Emmett and he only fought because Emmett was the aggressor. Emmett grabbed the gun. Emmett shot first. And Robert had to defend himself. Which is easily disproved, in my opinion, by the gunshot residue evidence. Mm -hmm. Candy, she testified in, in support of her husband. She said he was defending himself. Mm -hmm. Emmett was coming after him. She completely supported him throughout the trial. And she said that Robert tried to defuse the situation, but it escalated. The one problem with her, and I don't know why they had her testify in for the defense, because they obviously questioned her about this pop, pop, right? pause, pop thing. She says, so if Emmett shot first, like you were saying, and then Robert got the gun back and then shot mm -hmm. Emmett twice, then it would have been pop, pause, pop, pop. Right. But she's heard the opposite. She heard pop, pop, pause, pop. Right. But she said, oh, you know what? That was wrong. What I told you initially. What I actually heard was the pop. Right. The pop, pause, pop, pop. So what she okay. heard was Emmett trying to shoot Robert, Robert wrestling, getting the gun back, and then shooting Emmett twice. But that's not what she said on the interview. Right. I watched yeah. the police interview. And okay, she's lying. We just, you yeah. know, which one? Mm -hmm. The prosecution claimed that prosecution, so they're saying he murdered him in cold blood. They said he knew what he was doing. He was jealous. He came there with a loaded gun. Mm, yeah. He hid mm -hmm. the gun in his pocket. He waited for Emmett and Candy to return. He confronted him. He shot him twice in cold blood. And then not he shot him twice in the forehead and in the heart. Right. Like that is so next level. Like cold yeah. blood. That's like, let me shoot you in the two places that I know you will die. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> and what we don't have a good explanation for is Robert's head wound. Because right. he was shot at. So was he trying to attempt suicide and missed? Or was he trying to attempt suicide and Candy intervened? And it's oh. just not telling that part. Or did he truly intentionally shoot himself in the top of the head to come up with this self-defense story? Right. We don't know what happened. He says Emmett shot at him. Uh -huh. But we don't know. Nobody saw anything. I kind of find it a little bit less likely that it would be the self-defense thing only because you wouldn't shoot yourself in the head. 
Like you would shoot your arm. Right. Like that's exactly. real close to. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Sorry. What do you think? No, I was going to say that I agree with you. And I think it was more like maybe he was like, well, I just killed him. And now, and my wife was cheating on me the whole time anyway. And now I have nothing to live for. So I'm just going to like end it right now. And then missed? And he, maybe because he was like the, like, oh my gosh, I just killed somebody. Like, and he's shaking and whatever. And I don't know. Right. I don't know. Yeah. But like you said, like, why wouldn't he just shoot himself in the leg or something? Like, to prove self defense. Right. It's weird. Mm -hmm. After a 10 day trial, Robert was found guilty of the second degree murder of Emmett Corrigan. He was found not guilty of first degree murder. Okay. So they do not believe, well, that he could not, went. right, couldn't prove that. Okay. He was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Robert will be 60 years old before he is eligible for parole. But he'll only be 60. He has uh, attempted to appeal his conviction, and that has been denied. The last one I saw was 2019. Okay. In a wild side story, two months after Robert's conviction, in December of 2012, Candy pleaded guilty to embezzlement. Pause for reaction. <laughs> What? <laughs> Remember back when you asked me why she got fired from that law firm? <sighs> Apparently, she got fired for stealing $32,000 from them. Yes. And she took a plea deal and was sentenced to 14 years in prison with parole eligibility after two. Hmm. So she was released in June of 2014, which she did not serve two years entirely, mm. but she's on probation until 2026. Mm. Candy moved away from Meridian, Idaho because of the scrutiny she felt she was getting from the community. And she has a strained relationship with her children. As far as I can tell, Candy and Robert are still married. Oh, so I guess she's waiting on him. Yeah. I, I don't know. know. Okay, now, this is oh, where... There's more? Yes. <laughs> in 2015, after Candy was released from prison, Candy and Emmett's wife, Ashley, went on the Dr. Phil show. <gasps> did you watch it? Did you watch it? I did. <laughs> I sure did. And I have to tell you, I have not watched Dr. Phil. I used to watch Dr. Phil every mm -hmm. now and then, like after school or whatever it would be on. And it's fine. I mean, he cracks me up. I love a snapped. Mm -hmm. I may love a Dr. Phil more. It was something. Let me tell you. I'm going to tell you. Okay. Please okay, do. So this is the first time that Ashley had spoken to Candy since the murder, since mm -hmm. the affair came out and since Emmett's death. In fact, Ashley has a restraining order against Candy until 2028, but she lifted it for one day to do the Dr. Phil show. <laughs> it's totally worth it for the Dr. Phil. Just for Dr. Phil. It was intense. Let me tell you, Ashley was so much more calm than I would have been. Mm. There were a lot of times during the interview that I wanted to jump through the TV and throat punch candy. Just right. Oh my throat. gosh, man, I might have to watch this. And Ashley would just be super composed. And she would glare at her and like stuff, but she didn't. I mean, I can't. I they're lucky I wasn't in the audience. <laughs> because I'm telling you, I, I felt some feelings. Candy said at one point that she was glad Emmett was gone because he was a bad person. Like, oh, girl, mm, okay. he has children, and yeah. you're saying this to his widow. Mm hmm. Dr. Phil even said to Candy at one point, he's like, because she was like all up in Ashley's, like, you need to let it go. You're public speaking about me, saying my name. Like, we just all need to move on. And Dr. Phil is like, okay, let me get this straight. You had an affair with her husband and he ended up getting murdered as a result. And yet you seem highly offended. 
yeah, by this right? whole thing. Like, I'm not understanding you very well, Candy. You are – this is this attitude is not going to serve you well if you want to move on and for people yeah. not to scrutinize you. I mean, it was hilarious. Okay, so Ashley, she does stay calm, but she, she speaks her truth. She calls Candy out. She said that she felt Candy had been lying to Emmett, that she was telling him that Robert was abusive and that he was unfaithful to her and pitting Emmett against Robert and then also pitting Robert against Emmett. And Ashley was like, you wanted these two men to fight over you. Mm -hmm. Like, you liked this. You are not a victim here. Like, yeah. You, it, this is your fault that my husband ended up dead. And at one point, Candy said that she wished Ashley would just stop writing about her and talking bad about her. And Ashley is like, well, I wish you would have stopped sleeping with my husband. I know. And the crowd went wild. <laughs> just <laughs> dropped my mic. <laughs> it is, it's, a, it's a show. I'm telling you. It is a Dr. Phil for the books. Oh, so I okay. really enjoyed her butt chewing that she Candy got. Yeah. Gosh, I want to watch it now. Um, so you, you've mentioned this, I think, a couple of times now, but um, that Ashley's writing about her. Yes. What? Okay. So that's what I was going to get ready to tell. She does. Okay. She, his wife, Ashley, she picks herself up by her bootstraps. I'm telling you, she was surviving and thriving. She remarried this awesome man that she's truly in love with, and they had another baby together. She started a nonprofit for victims of trauma called A Reason to Stand, and they hold conferences and lend support for, quote, anyone who has ever felt broken, which I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. She's written several books in a series called The Moments We Stand, and she does public speaking engagements and stuff like that. So I watched this vlog, which I will link, of Ashley that she made. I'm not sure what it was for. It was like somebody asked her to make it for some reason to tell her story. And she was talking about what she'd gone through and, you know, just her story. And our listener, Jana, too, felt the same way about her as I did, that she's very impressive. She's a very mm -hmm. impressive lady. There's nothing cliche about her, nothing false. She's very real and raw and you just trust her. She's just, a. she seems awesome. Like truly. Mm -hmm. She talked about how she was humiliated. She talked about how she was angry. She talked about how she still struggled with feeling like she was enough, that she still had broken days, but that she refused to, you know, live like that. Something really interesting that she talked about that like was like a mind blowing moment for me to think about was that, so she's processing her husband's death and this betrayal that of this affair that, you know, was his choice to be unfaithful and ultimately led to him being murdered. And she was saying that it was so hard to forgive someone who wasn't there to say they were sorry. Mm -hmm. She's like, yeah. he's, he's gone. I want to forgive him, but is, is he sorry? Like, right. I, I, I mean, she knows that he is obviously, but like, but she can't hear it. And so it's like, so difficult to be able to truly forgive him for that. And she was saying that, she, you know, he died fighting for another woman. Mm -hmm. He didn't die fighting for me. He was fighting right. for her. And it was just so, I mean, I was like, man, the emotional strength that it would take to like have to deal with that with five children. Mm -hmm. She's resilient. Yeah. Like she's, a, oh. she's a really resilient. And although Emmett made bad choices towards the end of his life, which he did, he most certainly did not deserve to be shot to death in a parking lot at 30 years old. I mean, regardless of what he was or wasn't, he made mistakes and he should have had plenty of years to right those wrongs and they were stolen from him. Yeah, he, yeah, you're right. He didn't deserve to die. He deserved to be punched in the balls. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does, something obviously needed to change, but not this man. Like, this was not how that should have gone down. It is certainly not what he deserved, and or his family, or any of that. And um, with can say with one hundred percent certainty that he would do things differently. Mm -hmm. You know, like right. So that is the case of Emmett Corrigan. <laughs> And I really enjoyed researching this case. It's awful to say that, 
I really did. <laughs> I loved seeing Ashley. I mean, I thought she was awesome. I really, I liked listening to her and hearing her perspective and, you know, just like getting to know her. It sounds weird to say that, but she's a really cool lady. I got to see my man, Keith Morrison. There's a dateline. <laughs> and Dr. Phil, that Dr. Phil, I tell you what, I found that really late in the research. Like it was one of the last things that I found. And I was making dinner last night watching the Dr. Phil and was like, eat him a popcorn. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I kept rewinding and my kids would talk and I'd be like, shush, shush up. You hush it. <laughs> Mom's got pertinent business to do yeah, right now. Ashley's talking. Be quiet. <laughs> anyway, very sad case. But yes, oh my know, gosh, Ashley has made positive things come out of Emmett's life and their story. And I think that's great. Yeah, no kidding. That is super impressive. And uh, I mean, I also love her perspective just from what you've said mm -hmm. on it. Like that whole, how do you like forgive somebody who's not there mm -hmm. saying they're sorry? Like, who knows you if he was? Yeah, you don't think about that stuff. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. he was. But, and I can't believe she went on Dr. Phil. Candy, I can believe. Because she, if you ever right. watched it. Did she ever say, like, why she decided, she don't, don't know why she decided to do that? I think just because she wanted to put that in the past and confront it and be done with it and and have her story told also because I don't know, honestly, mm -hmm. why she did it. But and it's this candy. Oh my gosh. Just right from the gate. She comes out, Ashley's out talking to Dr. Phil, and they bring candy on the stage. And she literally said the first thing she says is she's like, What do you want? You want me to say I'm sorry? I'm sorry. Like right then I would have been like getting out of out of my seat. <laughs> like yeah, I I, I, you got to watch. I'm speechless. It. I don't even know what to say to that. Like I've been like, what? And that and Ashley was like, hi, <laughs> welcome, <Ken? in. laughs> welcome to the Doctor Phil show. <laughs> it's bananas. I'm telling you, it is bananas. Wow. Well, I'm glad that you had a good time researching it, though. Like, thank I, you. I did. Thank you, Jana, for. Yes. Thank, thank you, you. Jana. For being a um, supportive listener, uh -huh. like continued supportive listener. Yes. And she's been with yes. us. She has. Yes. I remember. I, I actually remember how she came to us. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's appreciated that also she enjoyed awesome. it. Yes, she does. She does. Say, like, clearly we have not met her, but we feel that way. <laughs> we feel as if she is awesome. So thank you for supporting us and thank you for sending us these suggestions because they are definitely, they knock, it's, it's like knocked out of the park every time I feel like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. So anyways, well, we hope that you guys enjoyed that. Yes, we do. <laughs> we hope everyone enjoys it. And if you uh, continue to like what you hear, please rate and review us. It really, when I know that people say they look at it. We do. We legitimately <laughs> look oh, at we our do. ratings and our reviews. And we would love to see the reviews. Even if you don't like us, tell us why. Seriously. Nicely. Can we just, yes, Politely. nicely. I'm just saying like, we've seen like things come in and we're like, well, I just wish we knew why. Like, it's okay that you feel that way. Just want to know why. So yeah. we're, we're not everybody's cup of tea. Yeah, we don't expect everyone to like us. Well, like they... coffee. <laughs> Some people like coffee. They like coffee. They don't like coffee. Right. <laughs> and that's okay with us. Yes, we're totally fine with it. We just love to hear your opinion as to why. So rate and review will help us. And um, also join us on Patreon if you have not already. Come find us. We have all the links in our bios. And then always remember, the world is scary. People suck. Hide in your closets. <laughs>